So I'm just cutting up the green onion or scallions. And you're using most of the green pork, I notice. You know, sometimes I figure that, it, that, you know, sometimes I have to be wondering if the green part is any is too tough. But you have to be mindful. Oh, yes. Uh, when you go to the supermarket, sometimes you do feel the green part is kind of chewy mm -hmm. or a little yeah. too tough. We can still use the green part, but just if it's too tough, it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this part is okay. It's very easy to cut. So if you feel it's hard to cut with the knife, that means it's just not going to be tender enough for the, for the mm -hmm. tea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're done with our scallions. And then we can open up our pork dish. I just bought this from the market, it's about a pound. First, you can put it in the pot. I would take that. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. So after you leave the pork in here, we can mix with scallions. And then we're going to grate some ginger root, fresh ginger. So what I use is a grater. It's easier. Instead of chop Let's put this with in a the knife. So that, uh, oh, sure. They can Will see that more be clearly. Better that's here? That's good. I, okay. That seems like it's a good place for me. So I'm going to grate some ginger root, about probably half mm -hmm. tablespoon. Okay. Now you're grating it on the larger hole of the, of yes. the grater. It's easy. And not on the one, one of this very small hole. Mm -hmm. About half a tablespoon. About a half a tablespoon? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have the very basic in ingredients now. And then next one, we're going to use soy sauce. What I, when I learned how to make dumplings. I never used, my parents and grandparents never used measuring cups. So it just go by your feelings. So, but today I did bring some measuring cups or measuring spoons. So for me, I say for one pound of pork, you may probably take two tablespoons, oh sorry, two, this is one, tablespoon. So you spread one, about two tablespoons of soy sauce. And then we're going to use salt. I say half teaspoon of salt. We have all the ingredients in Smells the good container. Already. <laughs> and if you prefer some sesame oil, it's time to probably put mm -hmm. one teaspoon okay. of sesame oil in. Mm -hmm. But today I didn't bring it in. That's fine. And I just I wasn't quite sure if people would be allergic That's to it. That's fine. And next step will be adding some water to make certain consistency for the pork. We can use a different tool, but for me, I brought in traditional Chinese chopsticks. So we can pour some water. This is a half cup. We'll start with a half cup of water. 
we may need more later. Start with half cup and start mixing. Now this is interesting, folks. See how she's mixing those with chopsticks. Aha. Uh -huh. That's not something I would I, think of doing, I, and it's a very good idea. Yeah. Or we can I like use it. a big fork. No, no, no. I or like spatula. that because that's actually it's better. easier. That's an to, easier way to do it, and I like that. For me, because I grew up with chopsticks, so it, of course it's easier for me. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Yeah, I got two pairs, so mm -hmm. it's easy to. I like that a lot. Handle. Nice. I'm learning things. I love it. For this part, we did half cup of water. It's almost there. We can probably add one more tablespoon of water in there. It's just, I say, half cup of water for one pound of pork is about right. And also, it's by, based on what kind of vegetables you're going to put in. If you have the Chinese napa, after you chop the napa, it's getting so watery. You have to get rid of excess water, so you cannot put too much water in the meat. So it depends on what kind of ingredients, vegetable ingredients, we're going to add on. But today, we just have very basic ginger and scallions. So I say, probably, I will add one more tablespoon of water and to mix it up. And the filling is ready. That's interesting now. Because you put in one more tablespoon, and it would, and it really did make a difference. Now um, uh, that's interesting. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it now it's it's much more uh, together. And so before it was like I could see the separate pieces of meat, and now the water has the that's that little bit more water. That's interesting. It reminds me of making meatloaves. Yes. Sometimes you Similar have to. Meatloaf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you add water, you have to to go with the filling and see how yep. much you want mm -hmm. to add, really yep. add on later on. Yep. So we're done with the filling so good. far. Good, good. And next one, I want to show this is a tag. See, the water is water is boiling. Water is boiling. It's fast. It doesn't take very long. So this is a package of dumpling wrappers I picked up from the Asian market. I live in Marlborough. There's a one, very close one in Westboro. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. The Asian market next mm -hmm. to Uno supermarket. Yep. yep. They do have them in frozen aisle in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So for me, instead, instead of having them in frozen, so I bought them yesterday. I left them in the morning to mm -hmm. thaw. Yep. So. Now, did, did your family ever make their own dumplings? Actually, we did. Yeah. We made they my grandparents your, your were made own, uh, from the flour, and you mm -hmm, add water, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you ha we have a rolling pin yep. to Similar make to the making dumplings. pasta, really. Yes. But, but without, you don't use an egg. It's just water and flour? Yes. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's easier to just purchase. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's better well, than I what I can make. I don't think very many people would make their, it their own. It takes too much time. Yes. Dumplings. So <laughs> we open up <laughs> the package. Oh, they're so cute. They're two sizes. Use the set the 